Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and another part of this series where we're taking a look at the 95-96 season loaded into the FM 2018 database. Now this has been a really interesting experiment for me up to now. I know some of you are playing with this database so do let me know how you're getting on with that down in the comments. And last time we left off we'd managed to get to the year 2021. Today we're going to go two more years into the future and see what has happened. But before we do that, today's video is sponsored by the One Football app. So if you do enjoy your football, which I assume you do if you're watching this video, make sure you click that link in the description to get all of the latest goings on in football in Europe, in the UK, all around the world, um, and all the latest drama, news, opinion, and transfers. Everything you could possibly want is in that app. So do hit that download button. It does help the show out. Um, you should also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. There will be a new experiment coming reasonably soon, depending on whether we tie this one up today or in a couple of days' time. Um, so let me know what you think about that down in the comments as well. And hit that like button if you would like to see one more part of this series. Now when we left off last time you can see United had won at the last couple of Champions Leagues. They cannot stop their dominance but something that people did want me to take a look at um, was how the Italian teams were getting on because obviously the league itself is broken so I can't really see that but they are in the Champions League. So you can see there's three of them here which we'll take a look at. You've got AC Milan who are Managed by Brian Kidd, which is quite interesting. Paolo Maldini, their current captain. When you look at the senior squad, they've got Maldini, Baggio, Almeida, Albertini. Nick Barmby is now there. They've got Zickler there. Marcel Desailly still there. There's Nick Barmby playing down that right flank. Uh, Marcel Desailly. Jens Lehmann is in the team as well. Um, uh, Filipescu. Jenny Slavin Bilic is there. Georgie Weyer is there. They've got a sensational team this AC Milan uh, side. They are really, really strong. Georgia Weyer there, a brilliant, brilliant player to have. Coco is there as well. Um, and Franco Berezzi is there. Strong, strong side for AC Milan. And if we look at their competition history, we might be able to see they did win the Champions League in 2014 in, in terms of the game itself anyway. Um, but they haven't won a Serie A title recently. I don't know if that's because they're not recording the Serie A uh, league winners or um, or what I don't actually know how that works for them if we try and look actually at their senior squad schedule I think yeah we can only see the Champions League there is nothing else there for them so we could, I don't know if they're actually recording who wins these titles or not I'm assuming not if that AC Milan team haven't had a top three finish yet but if we look at Roma you can see they've got Di Biagio uh, Del Vecchio uh, Castellini on Onopko, um, very easy names to pronounce here. It's a reasonably strong team, nowhere near as strong as the AC Milan team, it has to be said. Um, certainly not in terms of value at least, uh, but they are in the Champions League, were knocked out by Monaco. And finally you've got Juventus here, who did beat Arsenal, who are a very, very strong side. And you can see why, they've got Del Piero, Nedved, uh, Conte is there as well, Pellegrino. It's a strong side. Again, I think AC Milan has the edge on this team. They do have Matt Letizia there as well. Gianluca Viali, Luca Toni is there. Um, they do have a really good side, but I do think the AC Milan team is probably the strongest in Italy. Um, I'm not sure how many teams are actually sending into the Champions League at the moment. But if we just have a quick look here, we might be able to see Juventus there. Inter finished bottom of their group, AC Milan as well, and then Roma. If we just have a quick look at Inter, the final of the big teams that have managed to qualify for the Champions League. You can see Danny Negro's there, uh, Javier Zanetti, Pagliuca is there as well. Diego Forlan is at the club, which is something we haven't spotted before. He's joined them for just £6 million. What a steal that is. 26 league goals in 30 games as well. Um, 30 and 30 starts as well so uh, he is performing exceptionally well but they've also got De Canio Ince there as well they have got a strong side the two Milan teams probably the strongest in Italy but not as much depth in this team now if we have a quick look at their competitions page uh, looking at Syria again no top three finishes so the game just is not recording anything to do with the Italian league it's that 
broken. Um, so we won't spend too much time looking at that going forward. But I am going to go two years into the future now, and then we'll see how the big leagues are shaping up, how the Champions League is looking, the international competitions, and who the best players in the world are. So lots to look forward to, and let's get going. Well, we are now two years into the future, and as you can see, Manchester United won the league last time that we left off, and then the following season, they unsurprisingly retained the title for another year, 10 points clear of Arsenal this time, but they are closing the gap, Arsenal. Villa in third, Liverpool fourth, Newcastle back in fifth, very close behind them was Blackburn, and then Spurs and Chelsea. No real surprises in this league table whatsoever, and it's not actually that different from the year before at the top four identical and established although Newcastle so close this season three points off Liverpool but not quite able to do the job so another title for Manchester United there and then the following season it was a surprise United managed to get 92 points but it wasn't enough and Arsenal managed to come and take the league title from them Spurs are all the way up into third Liverpool fourth Newcastle now eight points off the top four, Villa dropping out of it into sixth, Blackburn a bit further behind. But again, not a lot of surprise in this table. It's exactly as you would expect it. The real surprise is Arsenal winning the league uh, and finishing with 94 points. If we have a look at their team, they are now managed by Louis van Gaal. And if we look at their senior squad, you can see why they're doing so well. What a sensational squad setup this is. They've got Hernan Crespo. Pavel Nedved, Emerson, Baborski, Frank Lampard is at Arsenal now. Sammy Hippier, Edmundo, Saviola, Danielson, Juan Fran. It's a sensational side here. So many players, over £40 million as well. So they must be doing some sensational transfer business. And when you look at their out, they've actually sold more than they brought in here. Juan Sarin leaving for £92 million. A left back getting that much of a fee. That is a great bit of business by Arsenal there, pulling in 92 million. The previous season they did spend 112, but again, 205 million going out of the club. Patrick Vieira going to Real Madrid for 93. Walter Samuel going to Barcelona for 101 million pounds. 23 year old Argentinian centre back going for over 100 million. Patrick Vieira, 93 million. Um, and they spent 112, but again, not bringing in the world's greatest players. They've got Nedved and Lampard there to replace Vieira. Um, and then the season before that, they did spend a lot of money bringing in Sorin, who they later sold 76 million. They have been investing, but they've been making a lot of profit as well, which is Arsenal's usual format um, in terms of making profit, not so much the investing side. But it has secured them a new Premier League title with Tony Adams as the captain there. That's a great result for Arsenal. If we look at United and their senior squad, you can see they've still got an incredible team. The Premier League is so strong at the moment. Uh, David Terrier is a glitch in the game. He has 200 current ability and potential. Um, that is a mistake, but he's a great player as a result. Luis Figo, Ryan Giggs, Roberto Carlos, Paul Scholes, Beckham, Totti, John Dahl Thomason, £72 million pound valuation. Seems a little bit over the top. The same for Zenden there getting a 71 million valuation. Uh, Cafu is in there. Rocky Jr., Gary Neville. Uh, Phil Neville's worth 44 million. Luis Enrique, Didier Deschamps is in there as well. It's a really, really strong side, but maybe lacking some of that squad depth. Currently managed by Jorge Valdano. Uh, if we look at their manager's record, you can see Ferguson left. Um, I'm not sure why he left, but he did leave the manager role, and he is now manager at Barcelona, so it could be that he left to go and manage Barcelona. Actually, if we have a quick look at his history, um, looking at his career stats as a manager, can we do that? No. Milestones, perhaps. Uh, if we look at his landmarks here, you can see he switched. Yeah, after winning the Premier League in 2019, he went to Barcelona and has done quite well there. A couple of league titles to his name at the new club so and the, and the new camp but doing very very well there um, Spurs and Liverpool also managing break in Spurs surprisingly so I'm not sure why they've managed to jump up from 6th into the top 4 but when you look here you can see why, why they've got Raquel May, Cliver, Anderson, Larson, Almeida a very strong team here and that goes all the way through uh, and then you've got the likes of Lee Bowyer further down um, who I don't think is setting the world alight. But they're heavily investing as well. 94 million there. 
um, and more recently £126 million spent on new players, including Almeida from AC Milan. Um, so Spurs investing to break into the top four. Liverpool have been bouncing around but seem to be dropping a little bit. Um, and they don't seem to have invested too much. They've got a lot of similar players in here. Paolo has come in, though. Um, but overall, they have got Paolo Maldini in there as well, which is a surprise. Poyet's in there. But they seem to have the core of the same squad. So if they're not investing money, they're not going to do that well. Currently managed by Graham Souness, which won't help them either. And then for the, my fellow Newcastle fans out there, because that is the team I support, you can see... They've got a decent team here. Kaka, the big name, 19 years old. It is the Kaka, it's not this guy here. Um, but net worth nearly 30 million. I'm not sure where they picked him up from. They got him from Sao Paulo on a free. That's great, great business. Um, but again, not the strongest team in terms of investment. Nicholas and Elka at the club will help, especially with Kaka just behind him. Um, and hopefully at some point they will break into the top four, get a run at the Champions League. But overall, not too many surprises in the Premier League. And if we just go to the overview screen, you can see top goal scorer was Saviola, Javier Saviola for Arsenal, just 19 years old, only just joined them. But look at that goal scoring record in his first season, 42 goals in all competitions. And then in second place, you have Juan Pablo Angel, um, who again seems to be scoring a few more goals than I remember him doing in his career at Villa. But there you go. Assists, again, Saviola getting the highest average rating. Um, but then you've got Francesco Totti in second place for United. Most assists, though, going to David Beckham, worth £81 million. And you can see great contributions here. Um, I'm not sure how dissimilar this is from his real-life Premier League stats, actually. It looks quite similar. Um, and then in second place, you do have Thomas Habler, I assume that is. It could be Hassler. Um, and then most player of the match, Saviola and Totti. Uh, most clean sheets currently going to Marcos at Arsenal, but David James in second place and yellow cards. We've got the nice Steve Harkness, and we've also got Steve Staunton. The Steves topping the table at the moment. So that's the Premier League. I don't think there's too much else to look at. We can look at the overall biggest transfers. Didier Drogba leaving Newcastle to go to PSG for £81 million this season. Rui Costa leaving to go to Barcelona. Um, and then further down... Maldini obviously just coming in. Danny Murphy going to Chelsea from Newcastle. Jordi Cruyff leaving Blackburn. Emil Heskey has gone to Everton. We've got to take a look at Emil Heskey. See what his rating is at the moment. Uh, I mean, he's banged in 10 goals, but that was in the championship. And since moving to Everton, not getting as many. Um, other players down here. Paul Ince, of course. Robbie Savage has moved to Wimbledon, which is probably where he belongs. Um... Danny Dicchio's down here. Ray Parler moving to Chelsea. Um, Jordi Cruyff, I think we've already looked at. Richard Wright moving to Villa as well. Kevin Davies going to West Ham. Um, but not too many other ones there. Getting a bit further down the valuation pool there. But you can see Samuel and Vieira, the two big transfers that year, both leaving Arsenal. And despite losing both of those players, they went on to win the league the following season. That's a really, really impressive turnaround for them. Especially as their signings aren't actually dominating down here. You've got a few like Nedved, Lampard, and then Gary Kelly from Leeds. Um, but other big transfers, Sol Campbell leaving Spurs to go to PSG. Uh, Rio Ferdinand's moved to Man City. Controversial. Um, but otherwise, again, not too many massive, massive names moving around. But some of those younger players are starting to shine through a little bit. You can see Romario here moving to Barcelona. He's 35 years old now, but still banging in the goals. Um, £48 million pounds he cost. Um, but I think that will probably do here. Now, if we head over to La Liga and look at the uh, Premier Division... You can see Barcelona, 35 wins, 3 draws, 0 defeats, 108 points. Imagine not winning the title with 100 points. That is a sensational season from Barcelona. And if we look at the season before that, they did actually lose the title again, this time at Real Madrid, hitting that 100-point mark and winning the league. Um, and that has historically been the point at which this league has been won. But this time, 108 points from Barcelona, 97 goals scored, actually less than Real Madrid. Um, Real Madrid had 100 the year before that. Um, but what a sensational return that is. Raul getting 32 goals in the league there as well. Second place was Batistuta for 
Bayern Munich. And then most assists go to Okan Burak for Barca with Ronaldinho at Real Madrid. Controversial again. Now, if we have a look at Barcelona and their squad, we will see. Obviously, they've got Alex Ferguson in charge, which will take them to that next level. But Overmars, Costa, Palmero, Nick Barnby at the team there. Walter, Samuel, Guerrero, Burak, Puyol's come through now. Guardiola's there. Torsten Frings at the club. Cheney, Mihailovic, Dida. This is just a really strong team with a lot of good young and old players. They've got the likes of Georgie Hadji here. A lot of players on the injury uh, table. But you see Georgie Hadji not playing anywhere near as much now, but still getting great results from him. Um, and Xavi down there now coming through the youth team. 13 million valuation, 21 years old. Starting to play a few more games, having been a mainstay of the reserves. But he is now just popping up. And if we have a look at the under-19s, uh, we can see Messi is not there, um, which is a bit of a surprise. So we'll have to have a look at where Messi is. Because he was in their youth team, I think. Oh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't in the game at all. He was not loaded. He would have been way too young at this point. I'm not sure why I'm thinking of Lionel Messi, but there you go. Um, but there you go, Barcelona winning that. If we look at Real Madrid and see how they've managed to miss out on this title, it is a bit of a surprise with a team like this. They brought in Vieira. They've got Ronaldinho at the club, 21 years old, but 71 million cotton for just 12.5. Now that is an absolute steal. Guti, very highly rated. Gilberto Silva is in the team. He's left Atletico Mineiro. Looks like Real Madrid raiding Brazil for these players. Uh, Dennis Bergkamp is there. Canizares, Redondo, Hofland, Hierro's down there as well. Laurent Blanc all the way down the bottom as well. Obviously, he's quite old at this point. Um, but this is a strong team. You can see the Barcelona one is probably a lot stronger, which is why they've managed to be so much more consistent uh, but Barcelona, 35 wins, 3 draws, 0 defeats. You have to look at that schedule um, for the senior team. And you can see, look, they went unbeaten for so, so long. Lost in the Spanish Cup, um, but not in the league. Lost in the Champions League as well. Actually knocked out by Arsenal there, which is a bit of a surprise at the quarterfinal stage. Uh, but their draws in the league coming against Osasuna, Real Sociedad quite late on. Obviously the league... Uh, would have been pretty much sewn up at that point. And Valladolid, so they beat Real Madrid twice in the league there, uh, which is why they managed to win the title, because that's two six-pointers, which swung the league by 12 points. So had Real Madrid won those two games, they would have won the title, and it would have been 106 for Real Madrid and 102 for Barcelona. So very interesting. That title came down to those two games between Barca and Real Madrid. But it, now let's have a quick look at these transfers across the league. If we go right to the end here, you can see um, huge transfers. Cafu going to Man United there. Zay Roberto going to PSG. Um, but then the valuations just drop off a cliff so much quicker than in the other leagues because there's not money distributed well. Again, Nick Barnby signed for £54 million from AC Milan. Uh, Pizzi leaving as well. Um, but once more, you're down to sort of 5 million at the end of the first page. So not a lot of interest going on in La Liga. We can't look at Serie A, but we can have a quick look at the Bundesliga. Just take a look at the last couple of seasons here. Um, Bayern Munich, who had missed out on the title to Leverkusen when we left off, did come back and win it by one point. But look how close that is. Three points separating the top four at the end of the season. The following season, Leverkusen came back, did win the league by a bigger margin. Um, and if we look at their team, managed by Bielsa, um, and you can see they've got a decent team. They do have Kanu up front, which is quite funny. 24 years old, getting quite a few goals for them. They've also got uh, Matija Kesman, which you might remember from when Chelsea first got their money. Um, at £32.5 million signing there. Not getting the great goal record, but he is a good player. Stefan Effenberg there as well. JJ Okocha in the team. 27 years old, not that highly valued, not really playing very much. Um, and if we take a look at Bayern Munich's team, then we can see managed by Wenger at the moment, they should be winning this league. They've got Shevchenko, Zidane and Rivaldo, and they can't beat this Bayer Leverkusen team to the top. What is that about? Shevchenko's been here for a while as well, getting quite a lot of goals, but they've got Zidane. How are they not winning the league with Zidane? That's insane. They got him on a free. I can't believe they got Zidane on a free. 
But the fact they've got Zidane, Shevchenko, and Ronaldo, sorry, not even Rivaldo, they've got Ronaldo up front, getting nearly 20 goals in the league, with Shevchenko alongside and getting just as many. What a high average rating as well. Shevchenko up front, Zidane up front, Ronaldo, uh, sorry, Shevchenko and Ronaldo up front, Zidane just behind them, Stankovic as well in midfield, and yet they can't win this league. I suppose it's because they've got Arsene Wenger in charge, isn't it? That's the only possible explanation here. Uh, Alessandro Nesta in defence as well. Kieran Dyer. Why is Kieran Dyer at Bayern Munich? That's ridiculous. Started out at Ipswich and then moved to Bayern Munich on a free transfer. Um, other players down the bottom here. Not too many worth spending a lot of time on. But that's ridiculous about that uh, Bayern Munich haven't managed to win this league. And if we just look at the transfers for this league in the past couple of years. Now we can see, so far at the moment, Pirlo leaving Red Bull Leipzig to go to Liverpool. Rangers and Celtic signing a couple of players. Uh, but Barca there picking up Torsten Frings for 15 million. Kesman was a big signing for Leverkusen as well. Uh, Salgado leaving Bayern Munich to go to AC Milan. Uh, Andrew Mutu going to Dortmund, another of those Chelsea strikers who didn't quite hit the mark. Um, none of those strikers really hit the mark until Drogba came in. Uh, from memory, but he joined Wolves on a free and then got sold for 20 million at the end of that season. So that's a great bit of business by Wolves there. Um, but if we go back to the previous year, 63 million spent by PSG. Um, but again, you're getting down to about 10 million by the end of this page. I think there's more money spread through this league than there is in La Liga. Uh, if we just have a look at PSG as well and look at their squad, because they do still have all that money. And you see they have, they have got Drogba up front, 23 years old now, uh, £81 million signing from Newcastle. And he's still getting just as many goals. They've got Varane, Roy Mackay, Stam, Campbell, Delgado, a great defence there for them. Um, overall, this is a very, very strong team, but they aren't actually winning the league. Instead, that is going to Monaco, um, who've won the last four league titles. And when you look at their team, they do have a great one. It's Rivaldo, Henri, Deco, Trezeguet. What a strike partnership. That is such great striking options. Rivaldo now 29, but getting an awful lot of goals. Henri at Monaco. You can see he's been there his whole career at this game um, and getting about 15, 20 goals a season. But when you're competing with David Trezeguet and Rivaldo, Trezeguet, 23 years old, getting a lot of goals. Uh, and then we've got Petit in the team as well. Nobby Solano's there, Fabian Barthez, Kanchelskis. Um, it is a very, very strong side, Lillian Tram. So it's not a surprise Monaco doing very well in the league there. Now if we have a quick look at the Champions League and see who has been winning this. Uh, you can see the past winners, Arsenal, have done the double here. Um, Real Madrid won it the year before, so if we drop back to the 21-22 uh, season and start off at the quarterfinals, you can see Real Madrid knocked out Atletico Madrid 6-3 on aggregate, Spurs actually knocked out Arsenal, AC Milan took out Monaco, and Bayern Munich took out Villas, very strong teams getting through. In the semis it was Real Madrid and AC Milan, but it was Real Madrid who got through on penalties. Um, and it was AC Milan who got through on penalties the time before that. But Real Madrid finishing as champions of Europe. And then the following season, in the quarterfinals, you can see United knocking out Leverkusen. Uh, not a lot of surprise here. Ajax getting knocked out as well. I'm not sure if their team is as strong as it was, and it certainly isn't. They've still got Edgar Davids, Lippmann, um, Frank de Boer, Ronald de Boer, both still there. Brian Laudrup's there as well. Um, further down... Yeah, I mean, look, they've got great out players appearing in their first team. So many of them will have been sold at this point, and Liverpool did manage to knock them out. In the semis, it was three English teams and Real Madrid, and it was Man United and Arsenal making it to the final. But Arsenal did win it 3 2 to secure a fantastic double under Louis van Gaal. Um, and, I mean, they've just got such a strong squad. And in the circumstances, selling so many players, they have done really well to achieve that. Now, the UEFA Cup, I'm not going to spend too much on this. We'll just have a look at the past winners here. You can see United had to settle for the Europa League um, in the 21-22 season. Roma did beat PSG to take it the following year, though. Um, 
but not too many surprises there. I do want to have a quick look at the likes of Celtic and Rangers as well, just to see who's winning this uh, league title. You can see they've got Roy Keane at the team, which is a bit of a surprise given he's 29 at this point, but he joined them on a free. It's not too dissimilar to real life. He wasn't playing at United, moved over there. Craig Burley's there, Malky Mackay's there, but they don't have the likes of Henrik Larsson, and I think Rangers are the team that are actually doing the best at the moment. Um, and we look, when we look at their senior squad, they've got the likes of Robert Kovac there. Um, but again, not too strong a team. Barry Ferguson's in there. Uh, David Weir's in there. Paul Devlin. If we look at their competition history, uh, they have been winning 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. All the way back, they won every league title there, Rangers. They are the stronger of the two Scottish or Glasgow Giants. Um so no surprises there. Now, if we have a look at the World Cup, finally, we can see the 2022 one was won by Italy. Um, in the final, they actually beat England 4-0. Del Piero getting three, Totti getting one, and they did most of that with 10 men as well. Um, England weren't able to get back in it. Had a man sent off, and Del Piero completed his hat-trick there in the 90th minute. Um so that's a little bit disappointing for England, but they did win it in 2018, so not too bad. And in the semis, it was Italy who beat Uruguay. England did beat Germany 3-0 there. If we just look at this Italian team, I'm sure it's extremely strong. Um, you can see Totti, Chiesa, Del Piero, Nesta, Cannavaro, Di Baglia, Di Baggia, oh, I can't say, uh, Inzaghi, Albertini. It's such a strong side. Cameronese in there as well. Francesco Toldo at Parma. Uh, Paolo Maldini. It is very strong, and even Franco Zola at the bottom there, 34 years old now, but still doing extremely well for Italy. Uh, England and their side, two consecutive World Cup finals, says a lot. But when you've got Scholes, Beckham, Lampard, Barmby, Anderton, Sol Campbell, Mike Lowe, Fowler, Shearer, all in there, there's no surprise about this. Um, because this game obviously rates these players so highly, or this database does at least. Germany not making it through. Uruguay, just have a quick look at their team. Bit of a surprise they made it this far, to be honest. They've done very, very well out of that fall and no doubt helping them get that far. But they were dispatched by Italy reasonably easily. Now, if we look at the World Golden Ball and just see who the greatest player has been in the last couple of years, Gianfranco Zola actually won it at 33 years old. Um, managed to get... A pretty incredible rate in there, 8.3 in the league, 8.38 in all competitions, 31 goals in all competitions as well. And even at 33, 34, he's getting so many goals for Palmer. Um, it's a real surprise. Raul, unsurprisingly, in second place at 22. And Del Piero as well, just behind him. And the following year, Del Piero did manage to win it ahead of uh, Signori for Lazio and Raul again, unable to win it. Um, but there you go, Del Piero getting so many goals for Juve, now 26, um, and you can see his goal scoring record speaks for itself there, but also his assist record is sensational, 8.66 rating um, is unbelievably high, he must have 200 current ability there, um, but the World Golden Ball, no surprises there, if we look at the World Player of the Year, um, it's the same, um, Footballer of the Year, Del Piero and Zola again, Goalkeeper of the Year, you've got Michelo. Uh, Ferron and Fiori there, three surprising ones, uh, Fontana, Tabi and Pascolo, and then Germano, Pascolo and Antonelli. Uh, very surprising, but it's, um, it is the Italian ones doing really, really well, and I suppose that's because they're not playing as many league games, because uh, the league isn't loaded. Um, but then again, the appearances are in there, so I'm not quite sure how all well that's working out. If we look at the World Team of the Year, though, that will give us a greater idea of where the players are. Um, you can see in 2021, Raul was leading the line. Signori, Zola, Del Piero, Rivaldo and Baggio midfield. Junior, Maldini, Bergomi and Belletti across the back four. Fantana in goal for Barry. Um, and then a very, very strong bench as well. The following year, Del Piero got the nod. Raul dropped into midfield with Overmars and Signori. Effenberg and Baggio in central midfield. Passato, Samuel, Cannavaro and Belletti with Messillo in goal. Uh, and Omri made it on the bench, Shevchenko, Zola all on there as well. And the overall one 
it makes it quite interesting reading actually. You can see Raul on the bench has the most goals of any player but doesn't make the starting lineup despite 180 and 261. It's Romario gets in there at 92 in 109 for Flamengo. And so he leads the line. Ovmars, Del Piero, and Crespo all in there. Rivaldo and Baggio as well. Junior, Alder, Adams, and Maldini. Pagliuca in goal. That's such a strong team. Look at the average ratings running through that. Even on the bench, there's a lot of eight points on there, uh, which surprisingly haven't made the starting lineup, especially Luis Figo not getting it onto the first 11. But that is going to be it for today's episode, I think. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you do drop a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel for the next experiment when it comes around. If you would like another part of this series, hit that like button. I'll consider putting another one out in a couple of days' time. But until next time, see ya.